A lot of what we consider to be good style comes down to the style habits that we use every day to get ready. So in today's video, I want to share with you 7 style habits that I picked up last year that have given my style a little transformation. From before to after, these outfits are a little bit more creative, they're a little bit more personalized to me, and I've stopped trying to fit myself into that minimalist, cool girl outfit mold that I so often see and for a long time I wanted to have. I've condensed a lot of what I've learned into these 7 style habits and hope that these quick and easy changes will help you better express your own style. One of the styling habits I've picked up this year that has completely transformed the way I wear colour is that instead of always doing a pop of colour, I like to now wear colour with more colour. This is something that I've really enjoyed doing this year and I feel like my colourful outfits have improved so much because black and white previously were just doing nothing for the colours I was wearing. And instead, going for these muted neutrals, going for other colours that complement the main colour I'm choosing, just left me with outfits that made me feel more inspired to wear more colour. So what happens when we wear black and white with colour is that we're taking a colour and we're basically pairing it with something that is on the furthest point and we're creating a lot of contrast in that sense. Whereas if you take a bright colour and you pair it with something more muted, so closer to the colour, I find that it just becomes more wearable and a little bit more toned down. And then if we're talking about creating more intense colour combinations for every day, I find it very inspiring to go for colours on opposite sides of the colour wheel because they bring each other out so well. Whereas again, pairing with black or white sometimes doesn't have that same effect. It also shifts the idea that colour is not versatile. Because colour is not versatile when we have to wear it with black, have to wear it with white. It actually becomes versatile when we start pairing it with different colours, when we pair it with neutrals, because we kind of see all the different vibes we can create with a single colourful piece. So give this one a try. Take a bright colour or just the colour, pair it with black and white. And you'll notice that it might be a pretty outfit, but what happens is that our eye just goes immediately to that colour and it almost intensifies it. Whereas if you wear that colour with complementary shades or if you wear it with some more neutral tones, you actually get an outfit that feels more wearable and more harmonious for the everyday. I started this series on my Instagram where I share a few colours that go well together and I've been doing this in my wardrobe and it's also been inspiring myself to just reach for colour more often. If you're interested in wearing more colour, getting started with wearing colour. I've got so many reels on my Instagram sharing with you tons of combinations you can get started with. If you like my style or my outfits, I feel like it all comes down to this next style habit. Something I do in every outfit I wear is to always mix high and low together. I like to pair things that are very dressy and dressy can sometimes sometimes be associated with more luxurious, with things that feel more understated and casual. This is the thing that allows me to create everyday outfit combinations that feel very wearable, yet there is just something a little bit different creating more interest. So let's just say that I'm pairing a more pretty or elegant dress, whether that is a summer dress or a winter knit dress, and I paired it with heels, and then I paired it with a really you know, put together handbag. It starts to feel like everything is blending into each other. This is not a bad outfit. It simply leans very classic and very timeless. But what I like instead in my style is creating that friction. So I will swap out one of these pieces for something that is in contrast. So whether that means very casual, a little bit more undone, or whether that means more girly, more playful. I want something that is in direct contrast to the vibe of the dress. The way that I use this style habit is that at least one item in an outfit needs to create some friction. But oftentimes I'll use two or three accessories to kind of play up the vibe of the outfit and create that friction in the look. If I was doing event dressing and I was wearing this very beautiful formal dress, then I probably wouldn't do event jewelry that was also very luxurious. I would try to tone it down with something that felt more casual. Whether that means some beaded jewelry, whether that means like some resin jewelry, or I would do something that is made from cord or string, but basically nothing to match the formality of the dress. And then for casual dressing, so casual dinner, maybe a movie, you know, just hanging out with a friend at a cafe. I love to do casual wear and then have one item be a little bit more glamorous and elegant. Whether it's some nicer jewellery or a more put together looking handbag, it just feels so chic to have that mix and match of different vibes. I always like to add on that this is a really great way to get better cost per wear from your fancier pieces. When you're able to take that and then dress it down into your everyday look, 
looks, you're really maximizing the wardrobe as well. For everyone, the friction looks a bit different. For me, I like to add this playfulness. For someone else, you can add a different element. You can add a bit of masculinity into more feminine looks. You can add a bit of sportiness into classic looks. And we're really just building something that feels very personalized to us. I kind of believe that, within reason, that most people can wear most clothing and make it work with the right styling. So I'm sure I'm 5'3", 160 centimeters. I really like wearing long clothing. This has always been the case. Long dresses, long skirts, long coats, long clothing. And the sole habit that has really allowed me to do this is making sure that I have lots of accents on the top half of my body. So what I mean by accents is anything in your outfit that draws your eye upwards as opposed to down. What this translates as are shorter necklaces as opposed to very long, you know, very statement earrings that really draw your eye upwards in an outfit. I really like shorter scarves. So when I'm wrapping it, I wrap it in a way that's more short. I really like hats because they put the focal point at the top of your body as opposed to the bottom. Shorter shoulder bags are a really really great example. I mean it doesn't have to be like right under the armpit, it can be like a little bit longer but if they kind of fall in the top half of the body it just does amazing things especially for shorter women to create more lift. What happens when we wear long necklaces with long scarves when all the accents and details are on this bottom half it actually drags us down a little bit and kind of pulls us to the floor as opposed to giving us the lift that we might want um, especially if we're not very tall so this tip is not really about wanting to be super tall or looking much taller but because I like those longer silhouettes by having those shorter accessories it just balances these two things out and it basically allows me to dress the way I want but also have it feel balanced and flattering if you are more petite or even if you're average height and you know what even if you're tall when too much of the visual weight is at the bottom of the outfit when there's too much going on there, it can often pull us down and make us look shorter with less lift. Give this one a try in your wardrobe. The next time you're reaching for longer things, the next time you feel like an outfit is a little bit heavy, you know, it's really pulling us down instead of lifting us up, take your accessories and shorten all of them and you'll immediately just feel more lift in the outfit. One of the trends that I've been seeing for 2024 is a move towards more personalized, individualized style. So one of the style habits I wanna talk about is opting for vintage or antique jewelry pieces to wear alongside modern pieces. Over the last five years or so, I've been building up a small vintage or antique collection. And I just feel like when you mix antique pieces with more modern pieces, it creates the most interesting stack that I can't really achieve with new pieces alone. So my sole habit here is that I really like to dig through Etsy and eBay and find those antique pieces or vintage pieces that are often going for a much better price than new. And they just have this like story to them that makes them feel so, so special in my collection. I have this three stone ring that I've worn every day for the last two and a half years. And it's from the 1920s. It's also a style that I don't feel like I can find that easily in store. And this particular bezel set design has a very antique vintage look to it. Something I've been building in my jewelry collection is a gold charm bracelet. This is something I would love to work on this year and just building it out a little bit more. I'll show you up close the details so it's kind of hard to show right now but I have some charms that are very kind of cute and a little bit more personalized. I love that three out of the four charms are vintage and they're honestly from like the 50s so being around for like 70 years and it really feels more special because I feel like I don't see charms like this anymore but also it's got that history and story behind it that just makes the piece feel so much more special. A piece of jewelry that I often get asked about is this pendant and chain. This chain is a Victorian antique chain so very old, but it's got this bolt ring on it that basically allows me to attach a pendant. And then the pendant is a vintage French pendant from the 70s. I'll put the type of pendant on the screen, but there are a lot of these on Etsy. They're a bit pricey, but there's a lot of them in solid gold. And I've had this one for maybe two years now and I've worn it most days. There is a certain charm and beauty of antique and vintage jewelry. I feel like it's been kind of almost passed on to me. And I just feel like it's going to have a life like after me as well. And I love that like longevity that jewelry has. I'll try to put down the edit below of where to start looking, what are some of my favorite stores and pieces to get you started, but there is honestly so much to look at on Etsy and eBay. Another one my style habits I picked up last year is that I've been going for some new and more interesting textures. So one of my habits previously was that I'll add texture to an outfit, but it will basically be knitwear or denim or maybe a little bit of leather in my accessories. But this year, something I've done is I've introduced new textures that have brought so much more dimension into my wardrobe. 
So croc emboss and pattern are probably two of my favorite textures to wear, especially against things like cotton. I actually love it against knitwear as well, and they just bring so much dimension. The best part is that because I have it in accessory form, I can pretty much add it to any outfit I'm wearing, and it's been incredibly elevating. Other things I've been doing, and I feel like these work especially well in like spring, autumn, in the transitional season, are sheer tights, or sheer knits. So with sheer knits, I'm usually using them for layering. So I'll layer them inside another jumper and you can see some of that like sheer knits come through or sometimes I'll wear it with like a new bandeau and it's not like super sheer, just like very light knit wear that creates a nice contrast to those heavier textures like denim or even like thick knit wear and wool. It creates a really nice contrast. I also like sheer tights for this reason. If you had opaque tights, it's kind of playing at the same level as other clothing pieces. And of course, you know, when it's cold, we just need to do it. But in the transitional season, when I can, I love playing with a sheer tight because it's in such clear contrast to the other opaque pieces I'm wearing. So I think it creates really nice dimension when they're sitting next to each other. I have a water resistant wind resistant shell jacket and this one is made from a nylon fabric and texture so this is really great because it has that technical fabric feel that again is so different to knitwear and because most of the time I wear coats with knitwear they just pair so well together so as I said previously I was only gravitating towards texture in the form of knitwear maybe in the form of like leather but these are fairly flat in the sense that there's only so much we can do here but when we introduce these new textures it just just brings this new dimension into all of our outfits, especially if we choose it in an accessory. A style habit that feels incredibly relatable to me right now is editing things down. So this doesn't really make sense, but what I have found continuously in my wardrobe, especially being a content creator as well, is that the less clothes I have, the more creative and the better the outfits are. If someone else said it to me, like I don't know if I would believe them because it doesn't really make sense. But every time I do one of these videos, videos where it's like 10 items, I can create honestly 20 outfits easily that I absolutely love. And then if I look at my wardrobe and I'm trying to decide what to wear, oftentimes I'm actually struggling as well. So there is really this power in editing things down so we're not distracted by things we don't love. We're also not overwhelmed by the visual clutter that is there in our wardrobe. In my wardrobe, I'm gonna try and show you, you know, the whole wardrobe. It's pretty full, but it's at a point where I still know where everything is. There is organization and I'm overall content with this. Being a content creator, like it does mean I have just a lot more clothes than what an average person needs. What I need in my life. So if I feel like I'm not gonna wear this more than X number of times, even if I like it, even if I love it, I will usually let go of it because someone else can just wear that like 10 times more than me. So that's a habit that I've been getting myself into to keep a curation that then allows me to better create outfits. The same goes for my jewelry box. I've been passing on some pieces and trying to edit it down further. But another thing I've done is that I put away occasion jewelry into a separate box. So some jewelry I only wear on specific settings. They're not everyday pieces. And again, it's just created more clarity and I'm more likely to be a bit more creative here and mix and match more. Whereas when there is so much, I really do get overwhelmed and just stick to my very boring everyday pieces. If you're not ready to part ways with your clothing, I just recommend getting on these like IKEA boxes and I basically put things away that I'm currently not loving, currently not wearing, but I think that I'm not ready to let go of them yet. So what I'll do is that every few months or so, I'll basically shop the section of clothing that I've put away and then I'll take something in my wardrobe and now tuck that away for a while and basically swap pieces in and out. And it kind of keeps my wardrobe space clear, but I'm still utilizing more of my clothes. To wrap up on today's video, one of my style habits is that I always know what the trends are, but I'm also very selective in which trends I allow into my wardrobe. I like to know what the trends are because it makes me a better shopper. If I don't know what they are and I constantly see something in stores, I might actually think it's a classic when in fact it's a trend. For example, maxi skirts. If I was to walk into any store last year, I would definitely think they're a classic because they appeared everywhere and they look simple enough. But it's only that I know that it's a trend that I can then take a step back and really assess whether this item is truly going to be classic for my wardrobe. 
So I find that being in the know just makes me very aware of what I'm seeing and whether it's trend or classic. So why don't we actually take a quick look at 2023 trends and see what I mean when I say I'm very selective with the trends. With those Y2K trends of like boxer shorts and with those like wearing underwear with tights, Kind of looks. These are immediately a no for me, especially when they don't even align with my style or are practical. Now let's go to something like colors, red and green. These are two trends that I was fully ready to completely embrace. Because firstly, I don't think color can really ever go out of style. You'll never have a color that you just can't wear once the trend is over. The only way this can be true is that you've never really liked that color or you just don't look good in that color and you might rethink it once the trend is over. But chances are it has a certain longevity in our wardrobe. So red and green happens to be two colors that I just absolutely love and I fully took advantage of this during the year. Now pink and the Barbie core trend on the other hand is a completely different story. If you have the right personal style and like skin tone for it, it could absolutely be classic. For my skin tone and for my wardrobe, it's really not. So this is an example of a color that doesn't have longevity because it never really worked with me to begin with and one I'm avoiding. Denim maxi skirts is something I've talked a lot about and I don't mind the way they look but something always feels wrong. Either it's uncomfortable or I find the fabric just not well made because the brands know that this is a trend so they haven't bothered to I guess give it the quality I would love to see. And another thing I found was that it didn't really lengthen or really do anything for me so instead what I did was that I got a denim midi skirt and I chose a shape that I thought was very practical very flattering and I feel like this was a really great way to kind of give a nod to a trend I like but make it more classic for my wardrobe. It's kind of inspiring me but I've chosen to adopt this trend in a slightly more long-lasting way. Some trends immediately are a no and they kind of teach me a little something about my style. So big bag trend. It was immediately a no for me because when I look at my wardrobe, I wear a lot of long silhouettes. I already like a little oversized. So if I was to add on a big bag to that, I think everything would fall apart because wearing oversized right now relies on me having a small bag, small details, to make it work. So not only did I not embrace the big bag trend, it made me just fall back in love with my mini bags because I understood how important they are. And I do want to admit here that I'm really not opposed to trends. Some trends really do inspire me and they inspire me for much longer than the season that they're in. They become long lasting pieces in my wardrobe and that is exactly what I want. What I don't want are seasonal trends that then leave very quickly. One way that I try to approach this is that I look at the end of a season at a trend. This is a time that things go on sale and it's no longer really that cool. And if I still want to wear it, if I'm still really inspired by it, then that's when I know something is right for me. Whereas at that time, if I am also bored of it, then it was probably just a fleeting thing in passing. Thank you so much for watching today's video. These are my style habits that have improved my daily outfits. If you found anything in today's video helpful, I would love for you to go give it a like. Consider subscribing. I'm on Instagram and I'll see you next week. Bye.